Blog Talk Radio. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Imagine a place in your mind, feel the vertigo. Standing next to angels, maybe devils wearing halos. You can be anything, your mind can take you around the globe. This world is yours, it's open fiction news radio. Hello, everyone. This is your host, Casey Baylor, with Urban Fiction News Radio. I have a really good show set up for us today. Um, I have my very talented guest co-host, Santiago, here again tonight. Um, Santiago, give a quick shout-out for our listeners real quick. Hey, everybody. I'm here in the house. <laughs> Okay. Well, as long as we know he's in the house, right, ladies? So, so. Um, as you all know, um, I was a little under the weather last week, but tonight I feel a lot better. I'm not 100%, but I do plan on showing off, so. Um, tonight's topic is going to be about the power of word-of-mouth marketing. For those of you who are still a little unsure of what that is or why it means so much to your author brand or your business, um, in general, I do hope to enlighten you a little bit tonight. Um, I do have a few tips on how you can position yourself to increase word-of-mouth buzz around your books, and um, that's pretty much what, what our topic is going to be about tonight. I'm excited. I don't know about you, Santiago, but I'm, I'm really excited about tonight's yeah. topic. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited, and uh, I'm, I'm really excited that uh, you sound a lot better today. <laughs> so, I know. Last uh, week, I was... Really. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure everybody was just like, uh, I hope she drank her tea and uh, and uh, rest. <laughs> um, she she gave some rest to those, uh, you know, to those uh, to that area. So um, she would be well, fine know, for this uh, the, for this interview. I actually talk a lot. I talk a lot, and that might have a lot to do with this. So, yeah. so I don't know. <laughs> well, you're a writer. Writers have to talk, so you know. Yeah, I, I, well, I, yeah, that's... It would be kind of awkward if a, a writer was not a communicator as well, so... Well, I am. I am a, I'm a chatty Cathy, yeah, as my I mother would say. You sure are. <laughs> I know, right? But um, tonight, we're not all business um, on Urban Fiction News Radio. We do also have a very special guest, Mr. Author Ben Burgess, Jr. He is an award-winning best-selling author for his works, Monster, um, and also Wounded. I've actually had the pleasure of reading both of those books, so I'm excited to talk to him. Um, They're very good books. He'll be on at about 6.30, so please stay tuned. Also, we have um, our call-in number. It's 347-989-0235, so if you guys have any questions, anything you'd like to know, comments, if you want to flirt, Santiago is in the house, he said. So um, give us a call. We'd like to hear from you guys. <laughs> We'd yeah, like call to hear in, from you guys. Because you'll never know when she'll lose her voice again. So, Oh, my God. Try, try, try to call in, yeah, and, you know, she might be out for another couple of days. Who knows? So. I know, I know, I know. Well, and that, and you got to remember, my birthday is next week, so um, I don't know. I'm still debating on if I'm going to do a show next Friday, hopefully I can. If I do, you guys, it may be a little earlier or a little later. I'm kind of like on the fence about that. So um, I may definitely lose my voice um, over my birthday weekend. I'm not sure. (laughs) Okay. We don't don't want to know why. Uh Yes, exactly. No question. No comment. No comment. Um, (laughs) Now, we both know that having anyone talking about your books talking about your projects, talking about the things that you're into, that's a big deal, right? That's a huge deal. That's what we want. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think it's, yeah, it's a huge deal. That's what that's what it basically boils down to. I know, for example, I know that I'm a writer, right? But, Santiago, you're also a writer um, and a very talented yeah. writer. Um, well, thank you. That's kind of like, that's what you want. That's what you want. You want people talking about it, because you cannot, I don't care what anybody say, you cannot get any better publicity, any better marketing than 
through word of mouth because, let's face it, we talk to each other, we talk to our friends, we talk to our family, we kind of recommend things, we say what not to listen to, what not to do, what not to read. So that's a huge, huge and powerful yeah. method of marketing. Well, you know what? Well, people, you know, they should wrap their mind around this thought. Think about it. Right now, somebody can actually be discussing what your piece right now, what you wrote, you know, right. and telling someone else who can take you to another level or maybe bring you to somebody or introduce your work to somebody who can change your life overnight. One of the things that I, I recall when I first started writing and my first book was published was I would go to bed, really, and think about who out there was reading my book, enjoying my book, and who was, who that, who was passing it on to the next person and who that person was. It's just so exciting right. to know that once you put your book out there, once you put your work out there, may it be whatever type of art it is, you will never know who's actually looking at it right now, reading it, talking about it, and, and uh, the possibility the possibilities are limitless. And you never know, and that's very exciting to me, every day that I can wake up and one day, that day is the day my life changes completely because of what I wrote. Yeah. And, and you know that that was that's very interesting and, and very very exciting and and I'm sure the multitude of authors out there right now listening are probably saying yeah that is like one of the greatest things is to get some feedback from somebody who read your book and then also told someone else about it and that person I I can remember one time someone commented on my book and and they were almost halfway across the country. And I was mm-hmm. wondering how did they how did they get the book? How did they read the book? Where did they, you know? And you know they explained you know that you know they read word of mouth or heard about it and you know wanted to pick it up and they did. And you know what? Is that to me? I can't express how awesome being a writer and then having people love your work enough that they would tell somebody else. Yeah. You know. In either direction, let's just get there. Like if somebody tells um, someone else, say you have a product and it, it sucks and the product is no good, people will tell people that product is ridiculous. I would never recommend it. You know, in big business, big companies, they realize that. They recognize that power, you know. Yeah. Um And nowadays you have so much reach. You can reach more than just your family and personal friends. Like with social media, you can reach out to, like, for example, I have, like, close to, like, what, 2,500 Facebook um, fans, however, or friends. However, I don't necessarily know each of them individually on a personal level. But if I I can create buzz or um, I can literally spread a word about a product being horrible or being no good or even being great, and raving about it, and other people in my in my circle of those 2,500 friends can then pick it up and then think about that. The triple effect is they can then test that product, they can then purchase that product, they can then turn around and decide for themselves if they like that product and if they do. They can turn around and then spread the same message to their friends, their circle, however many friends and family and whoever that's in their circle. That's a huge, like, that is major. That goes beyond, um, you know, you spending money on a certain campaign um, to get your stuff in front of people. That actually goes beyond it. It really does. Yeah. It goes beyond what you can pay for. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yes. I the think internet and those, social media is, ooh, um, yeah, I mean, it's so far-reaching and has changed the game in so many different ways. But, uh you know, one of the things you were hitting on is the fact that nowadays, you know, with social media and, and just just uh, Googling things and, and trying to find out, get some information on it, you can get information on almost anything you're getting or you're interested in, in purchasing, and sometimes you will get bad reviews or whatever, and, um, and, and next thing you know, hey, you know, it changed your mind. You were interested in that for a second, but you have five, six, seven, twenty, thirty, forty, hundreds of people that – said something about it, <laughs> and it changed. Mm-hmm. And it paused you to pause. You know, I, right, I have, I, right, exactly. 
it causes you to pause. It's true. I've done that. I have done that. I have been about to purchase something. It could have been as simple as makeup. It could, it could be as expensive as a car. It can be as, you know, whatever. And I've done research on things I want to try, I want to buy, that I like. I, re, I read, you know, that's one of the tips, too, is, like, I, I ask people about it. I review it. I Google search it. Um, and then I read what's being said about it. What's, what's, you know, and it's crazy. Here's the funnier thing. Um, people will, if you have more people bashing your stuff than praising your stuff, um, that too, people will not purchase because of that. However, yeah. if you have more people praising your stuff and not that many people you know, or if the number of people praising your stuff is greater than the number of people bashing it, that helps too. You know what I mean? So it, it's a crazy game. It is a game that you play when it comes to putting your work out there um, and trying to get people to talk about it. That's another thing too. Again, if you have any questions, you can hit three four seven nine eight nine zero two three five. We'd love to hear from you. Yes, um, you what I'm going to do really quick. Go ahead. You were gonna say something. Oh no 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 no. I was just uh I I was comment just um you know there's the the, the pros and cons of of uh, the publicity and sometimes like you were saying there's a balance. You're not gonna get. I mean sometimes you'll get some people saying some negative things and and sometimes it's right. just somebody who's not even they're just doing it to be doing it. But overall, like you said, right. just stay on the on the on the good side, of course, of of, of more reviews. You know that uh, right. that actually has a lot of power. It generates a lot of interest, and more people are going to say, "Well, twenty people said it's nice. One person said it's not." You know, those those people right there, like you said, it's quick to turn and say, uh, "I'm going to second guess this," or "I'm not sure about buying this." All of a sudden, and um, that that it does. It has a it has a it has a power, man, and it, and it's really it's really good. I mean, there's like I said, there's good and bad about it because. Uh, you know, once you get on that bad side, it can, it can kind of ruin some things that you're doing. Or um, on the good side, you know, like they say, the media the media can make you or break you, and it's kind of the same type of mechanism and, and type of, of monster that's created through the Internet. It's true. But, and then, and then I'll talk about that a little later as well. But um, I'm very transparent as it comes to discussing, like, you know, whether when I get reviews, you know, thankfully, um my series, Your Husband, My Man, it doesn't have too many negative reviews. I think right now, like, I'm up to 330-something reviews, which is good. But, like, I think it's only, like, eight negative reviews. So that that's a beautiful thing. I hate any kind of review that's um, negative. However, what I've learned, too, and, and I'm going to discuss, too, is credibility with the word of mouth. So even though word of mouth, it can be a beast, it can help you out tremendously, it can hurt you, it can break you, credibility of the person speaking it, um, that plays a huge part, too. And what I mean when I say that, for example, um, I had a person leave me a one-star review. I was so pissed, and primarily because, not because you leave me a, ne a negative review, but, like, I'm the type of person, if you leave me a, reg a negative review, at least have enough courtesy to tell me why it was a one. Yeah. Um, like, the person put, and hear, hear me out right here, the person put um, one star, and then they put, didn't really read it, and that was a review. Oh, wow. <laughs> didn't really read it. I said, then, and I wanted to, like, I contacted Amazon. I'm like, yo, can you guys move it? And then I thought about it. I wouldn't take this Joker serious. Like, I wouldn't take that review serious. Yeah. At all. At you all. Would. Like, literally, at all. Um, I had another person, one star, I think they meant to put five, but they put one star and they're like, oh, my God, I hate when a book ends on a cliffhanger. I, I need the other part, but it's so good. And then they put a one star. It's like, is this a positive review or is this a negative review? Like, yeah. I felt kind of like, where are we going with this? So sometimes yeah. in saying that, word of mouth can go both ways. It can, like, literally. And then you have to recognize as the author, as the writer, as the producer, whatever it is you're you're creating, 
that you can't take everything super serious. You really can't. Um, well, I have you know what? A lot, of people are not, a lot of people are not going to look at those stars. They're going to look at what they say. And no. if that person was, you know, re, you know, uh, basically giving all kinds of great credit to your book, wanting the second part, the next part, and the other person just said, I didn't really read it. You know, you have to give credit or, or, or the benefit of benefit of the doubt to people that once they read that, they will see that's a person that shouldn't, she shouldn't eat or hear, shouldn't have made a comment or, or, or made a judgment or whatever. And the other person, you know, to start it make a difference because what basically what she was saying was she loved it. In other words, I mean, that's plain right, English. Right. So, you know, at the end of the day, the stars don't mean anything. It's really the comment, and the comment made that other the person comment. look like a pure, pure overused word, which is the hater. You know, a person just saying something. And no, but that it. was, I was going to say, is like you are literally um, real hardcore riding on that hater train. But um, I'm going to play a song really quick. Hmm. It's called Crazy About You. And we'll be back in a minute.
And we are back. This is, again, your host, Casey Baylor with Urban Fiction News Radio. We do have a special guest co-host, Santiago. He yeah. is here tonight. Yes, indeed. And we are excited <laughs> because tonight we are talking about um, the power of word-of-mouth marketing. You were going to say something. Don't let me overpower. Stop up the conversation. Oh, no, 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 no. It's always always good to hear your voice. You have that uh that voice that could be uh, uh we were talking about this before and I said you got the voice that you could have been uh on that movie Her, the computer. Yeah. Oh wow. <laughs> you could Even have been you could have been her. <laughs> I could have been her. You, you know what? Maybe her. I'll try hey, out. Hey, her. You could be him. I could, <laughs> yeah, I could be him, you could be her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um Tonight, I'm excited. Well, for a few reasons. We have Ben Burgess, Jr. I had the pleasure of um, I had the pleasure of interviewing him on my magazine site, Urban Fiction News Magazine. Um, he's a, a great author. And just in saying that, what I've learned is a couple different things. I'm not going to get all into that until he's on. Um, I'm not going to give him too much praise until I'm actually talking to him. And he can defend himself. Um <laughs> Um, We're going to get back on topic. We're talking about the power of of word-of-mouth marketing, and I have a few tips on how to position yourself, your books, or even your business for word-of-mouth marketing. And there is a way to position yourself. Um, That way to position yourself is you have to kind of be, first of all, you have to have your stuff on social media. That should be a given. Surprisingly, it might not be to some folks, but you do have to, do you agree with that? You have to be kind of like, you have to be in, in the realm of, of visibility, so to speak. Absolutely. Um, it, it, yeah. it, you know, I I can go back to something that I heard on the radio. I believe uh, you heard it as well. I think it was Michael Bazin said um, when he was, uh, um, when he's on his radio show and, and taking submissions, he said, don't even send a book in unless you have a website. So, you know, just the basic elements of, uh, of of actually, you know, being out there on social media, you know, being on the Internet and, you know, people wow. having that, you know, access to you, having that accessibility to you is very important. So, you know, that right there said a lot when he said that, what well, this was years ago. So, you know, you put a book out, you need he a website, hung up you on know, somebody. start from everything. What's that? He hung up on a girl. She and she probably could sing her, you know, her behind yeah, off, yeah, but yeah. she didn't have a she didn't have a website, so he hung up. Yeah, yeah. Um, I thought that was a bold statement. He probably lost yeah. a follower because <laughs> I probably would not listen to him again. But it meant it spoke volumes. It said something to me. It resonated with me. Here you're all finally on the air with Michael Bazin, and he's putting you in a position to reach his audience, which is a huge audience, and you're not ready. Really? Well, that doesn't even make yeah. sense. Yeah, that took her down. I mean, she's not even she's not even built to even to make it to me because anytime you're out right. in front of people, you should have some thick skin. You know, you should be ready for criticism. Uh, uh, right. All kinds of comments and everything. So if that if that kind of deterred her or slowed her down, she shouldn't even be. You know, if she's going to write, she might as well write the book for herself and and keep it in her house because uh, really that shouldn't even. You know, I I, I can see where okay, you, you know, it did it did hit you a little bit and and hurt a little bit. However, you know, if you, if you can't take that, you know, you're, you're in for a lot of uh, a lot of pain because there's going to be a lot of people out there, a lot of critics, a lot of people that think they know what they're talking about or, you know, they have an opinion yeah, and they yeah. have a right to that opinion and they're going to say their, you know, say their things about your work. They're going to say their things about, you know, all kinds of stuff. Sometimes people just, you know, say stuff about, you know, maybe your cover, maybe your picture. So you have to be prepared for that, you know. At some point, you know, writers, I, I think most writers are thinkers, you know, so, you know, you yeah. – this can damage you and this can take you down, but also as a thinker, you know, you should have been through a, a lot of thinking process through uh, so many different obstacles in life that you, you kind of have already prepared yourself. You already have a fortitude that's not the average or the typical. So, you know, as a thinker, you know, you have to put yourself in that, you know, kind of play that, play that as I did. And, I, and I'm, I'm guessing you have, 
is that, yeah. you know, you had those dreams of publishing, getting big as a writer, and, 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 and hearing people say negative comments about you on Twitter or whatever it may be, and some people talking some good stuff about you. So I've already, I've already in my mind, right. in, in my visions and everything, so nothing, there's not anything like that that's going to stop me. I would just look forward to seeing him one day and saying, yeah, I'm that person that you, you hung up on. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, hopefully they weren't you know, too that hard. Motivates you, you. Let, it, let it motivate you. <laughs> let it fuel your motivation. Don't let it take you down, you know? So. Right, 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 right. That, that actually person, brings me that to person, <laughs> Yeah, and if she's listening today, you know, who knows? Maybe she is. <laughs> Never know. She's like, you know what, you're right, and, you know, dust yourself, dust yourself off like they say and, and get back in the game. So Right. Well, that actually brings me to uh, my first tip, controversy. Example, really quickly, controversy can sell anything, believe it or not. Um, controversy is not necessarily a bad thing. However, as it relates to positioning it to help spread word of mouth marketing, um, you don't want to have the kind of controversy, and as it relates to authors, you don't want to be like the person who you get a negative review and then you're you're literally publicly bashing the reviewer. That's not the kind of controversy I'm talking yeah. about. For example, as it relates to boxing, Muhammad Ali, um, Mayweather, they all kind of like they create controversy, and it sells tickets. It yeah. sells. It works for them. You understand what I'm saying? Like even the candy company, Mike and Ike, when they look like they separated, like they had the boxes of candy for Mike, oh, the boxes yeah. of candy yeah. for Ike. Same thing. Really, it, it was yeah. the same thing. Yeah. They realized that controversy sells. Now, funny enough, if you're buying Ike's candy or you're buying Mike's candy, they were still probably working together, and you're buying the same damn box of candy, of candy but – they fueled you picking a side. Really, it just fueled you in buying. They could play around. One, you know, one box could be more zany and crazy. The other box could be more whatever. And then they really have you. You're buying the same box of candy. Really, that's what it is. Yeah. So as it relates to controversy, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. What I personally have done, I would you? say. You. Not you. Yeah. Um, Say it again. You had controversy? You had controversy? You? I had controversy. <laughs> I know I'm sweet. I, I am. I, I, I am. Everybody, I'm everybody's ready to hear this. They want to hear this. Okay, let's hear it. <laughs> well, you know, like, look, my definition of creating controversy, in my advertisements, right, I put, I make bold statements. I say things like, um, one click, the hottest book out today. Basically, I'm telling you, my book is better than everybody else who just published anything. I I don't know that. I really don't. I don't care if that person has a thousand reviews. Mine is hotter. That's how I state it. That's the way I market myself. And then I start marketing myself like, do you really want to be the last person to know? Basically, I'm saying (laughs) you're on the outside. You're the outside. My stuff is on the inside. Everybody's talking about me and my stuff. You're the outsider. What are you going to do about it? It works. I don't right. know. Um, well, it works. That's, it's a form of, because technically speaking, another writer could look at that. They can pull me to the side, and they can be like, well, you know what? Mm. Or they could even comment, I want that, actually. I, I really would like that. Like, to have a writer be like, you know what? Your stuff isn't better than mine, because I am the queen of turning that <laughs> into, I will make that work for me. And then, you know, it'll work for them, because it's a controversy. People... Love it. They love it. They love controversy. They love drama. And if for no other reason than picking up your book, if you fuel something, they will purchase it just so they can have a comment on it. So they yeah. can pick a side. Yeah. Am I lying or am I telling the truth? No, I mean, that's that's part of uh, it, almost everything out there. I mean, I, I, I think right away when you do something bold, uh, people always talk about the expression bold and daring when it comes to fashion. Why? Because you yes. want to catch people's eyes. You want to get them interested in what you have on, and you want them to see you. So it, it's working right. that, as well as you talk about, you know, just the word play where people say, I'm the best, you should have that confidence anyway, and someone is going to say, well, right. let me see right. if you really are the best, you know. And then in return, if you do have anybody who is 
your competition, you know, they're, they, you know, if they comment, you just they didn't realize that they just helped you because if they have right. 25,000 followers or people that, you know, are interested in their work and you're coming at someone else saying, oh, your stuff is nothing or whatever, I'll blow you away. Now people, those right, 25,000 right. fans now know you because he commented or she commented on your stuff. So they, it's, right. it's, there's more than just one simple layer to that, you know, and you as, as you brought up the uh, – the 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 um the example of the boxing you know and within boxing it's you know at the end of the day when when these guys finish their fight they make up they say hey you know all we were doing was selling the fight and you know what at the end they're of the day they're shaking hands and having lots of yeah, yeah, I'm not crazy you know, yeah, right. it wasn't really <laughs> nothing it was just about you buying that tickets you know buying the fight you know at the end of the day it's not a bad thing because you know what we're not just visual people we're we're mental as well, so there's a stimulation that, you know, needs to be, you know, ne- we need to be stimulated also for us to be interested. So, you know, there has to be something more than these two, you know, guys that are, 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 are built to box and, 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 and actually know how to knock people out and know the sweet science, but also the fact that you say, well, you know what, if, you, if, if they don't speak or they don't have personalities now, you know, it, 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 people lose interest. That's why you have, yeah. before the fights, you have... All these um, these interviews, you have these uh, these face offs now in boxing, which I'm a boxing fan. You watch 24 seven and 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 all the the, the following of, of these fighters before they even meet up, which they go into their background. They learn about their family. They learn about their history. They learn, you know, all the things that got them to where they're at. So they're they're going to get this big payday. Everybody's going to see them on TV, and at the end of the day, it works. You know, it's it's not. It's not anything new. It's always been something that people, you know, people use out there marketing and, and promoting their stuff. It's true. It's, it's very true. And I, I've already recognized that a while, you know, a while ago. And that's why I'm saying I, I don't I, – I heard somebody, I can't necessarily say where I remember hearing this, but any publicity is good publicity. Yeah. You have to be able to understand that. <laughs> I think uh-huh. nowadays it's changed a little bit because of social media, but you know Man. before it was it was just get publicity. But now it's not really difficult to get a lot of publicity for a lot of these people because no. of social media. But it, you know it's it's a different monster now because uh, of so many different ways technology wise for people to actually find things out about you to research you. And you know what actually it it seems to be more. Um, it, it, it seems to be more damaging than it used to be. You know what I mean? Because now you see a lot of people, you know, doing certain things to other people or threatening to do other things. Um, so right. it, it looks a little bit more damaging than it. You know, that, that's just my view on it. But, you know, I understand that because there was that old saying, any publicity is good publicity from Janet Jackson. She was, you know, on, on, on the Super Bowl, on Super Bowl thing, pulling out her breasts and all these things and Madonna you know, when she was she, she was fading a little bit, kissing Britney Spears and, and, and Christina Aguilera on stage. You know, these things do. They, yo, wow, you know, you got All a bunch of their fans see more not people interested paid in who attention. they are. Yeah. It increased, yeah. yes, it increased people watching the show. It increased news speed. It increased, you know, people replaying the show. That's all it does. It That's exactly what it does. It's controversy to the point of it increases the the revenue. It increases your bottom line. Um, another quick point. It does. Another quick point because um, we're going to add our our guest for tonight. Um, cliffhanger. Now, Santiago, have you ever found yourself caught up in a television series? Absolutely. Yes. No. Yes. Have you? Yes. Yes. Now, of course. What you want to know why? Every week, the the whole point of the series is to drop you off on a cliffhanger and literally leave you hanging there for one more week. Now, why yes. is that powerful for word of mouth? Because now, after that cliffhanger, what's happening? People are talking about it. They're tweeting it. They're, I mean, they're telling their friends about it, and they're creating a buzz for you. Okay, so that now all of the whoever else was talking about it are all going to be stationed in front of the television the following week so that they can now talk about it. That's exactly what you do in your writing. I personally yeah. suggest, and the way I write, every chapter I write ends with a cliffhanger. 
Yeah. That's the way I do it. I want you to feel like, you know what? I wanted to go to bed early tonight. Damn, this chapter. And now I got to finish this. I got to go to the next one. <laughs> like, I want you to feel that way. I've had people say that. I have I've had people tell me that they were riding on a bus. And they missed their stop. They were riding on a train. They missed their stop <laughs> because they were engrossed in my stop. I've had a lady tell, um, excuse me, a lady tell me that she was cooking. Um, in her review, she said, "Don't read this book while you're cooking. I nearly almost burnt my kitchen down." That's what I want to hear. I don't want your house to burn. However, I like well, the I'll fact that it was I'll, that. I'll do the reversal to that. I think the person on the bus didn't really want to go home, and the person that was cooking didn't know how to cook. <laughs> They didn't want to go home. <laughs> <laughs> they really didn't want to eat what they were cooking. <laughs> <laughs> right. They forgot to add salt. Um, <laughs> so what we're going to do, I'm going to play another quick song. Then we're going to come back, you guys, with Mr. Ben Burgess, Jr., again, award-winning, best-selling author of um, Wounded and also a Monster. So we're going to yeah. play this song really quick. It's called Pull Up. And we'll be back. What a deal. I'm the baddest up in there. And you know it. Yeah, you know it. Look around. I got models and models and yeah, we throw it. Throw it up, throw it up, keep it coming. I'm just try to have a good time. So then you come my eye. Can't replace. 
again, this is your host, Casey Baylor, with Urban Fiction News Radio. We also have Mr. Santiago, the talented. He's on the line with us tonight as well. And I'm excited. We have yes, Mr. Lynn Burgess. Yeah. Really good author and uh, spoken word poet. Uh, and um, he's from New York. And uh, let's, let's, yeah. uh, let's see what he, let's, let's, let's uh, talk to Mr. Burgess. Yes, and Ben, are you here? I'm here. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I can't complain. Okay. Well, tonight we have a lot of questions for you. We're going to, like, um, run you over with questions. Like, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> we're just going to ask, you know, get to know you a little bit. I personally read your stuff. I think you're brilliant. Um, I'd like for you to introduce yourself. All right. Um, I'm Ben Burgess. Um, I'm a father. Um, uh, NYPD detective. I'm a personal trainer. Um, I'm an author. I try to wear a lot of hats. I can see that. Oh, wow. How do you yeah. even sleep? That's my first question. <laughs> <laughs> How do you sleep? When do you sleep? Actually. Um. Okay. So. You are the author of both Wounded. I had the privilege of reading Monster first, um, and I loved the concept behind Monster. Um, give us a brief breakdown of what that book is about. Well, the book is 90% true. Um, it was based off of me. Okay. Um, when in my college days and stuff like that, um, when I was going through that phase, the monster phase, um, I wrote a poem called Ugly, and I used to perform that poem a lot. And a lot of people used to say, oh, man, that poem is great. If you wrote a book about that poem, it would be amazing. So I'm like, all right, you know, would people want to read that book? I'm like, I wasn't in a good spot when I was going through that phase, which people wanted to <laughs> like, read that. So, you know, right. I was like, you know what? With that book, I feel that people could learn from my mistakes. I'm like, with that right. book, the people that I did hurt could see where my mind was. And it's kind of like an atonement to them so right. that they know that, you know, like I wasn't in my right mind when I was hurting these women. So, um, well, emotionally hurt. And I don't want people to think, oh, he's beating people up. I don't want emotionally hurting women. Um, right. So that that was the that was the point of that book. I wanted people I wanted people to learn from it. I wanted people to um, the people who were based off of characters to know where I was. I wanted people to talk about it and to think and to open people's minds to different ways of thinking. Yeah, that's where uh, now, writing comes from, though, is that the experiences is what we write our experiences and, and and we use that as a as a tool to teach other people because everybody doesn't go through the same things. Yeah. So that's awesome. I think so, too. And and, and just as a quick going back over what you said um, so that the audience can get a clearer picture, um, the book Monster is based on a man who is hurting. Um, he grew up feeling unworthy almost um, because of, I'm sorry, my voice, um, personal issues, and then it kind of twisted into something ugly, kind of. Yeah. Um, and when I say I ugly, to... what? Oh, I'm sorry. What I was saying, and, and as far as ugly, it just means that you kind of turned you turned off your kindness and then you kind of put on this, you put on monster, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. um, it's a great, great book. I really personally like it. Um, it's one of awards, one right? Of the, yeah. I won um, four awards. Um, I wanted that book to be really honest. I wanted people to read the book and truly feel it. Like, I don't, I think a lot of times as men, we try to, you know, always be that tough guy and to not, like, act like anything hurts us. I wanted people to see that we could be vulnerable, that 
sometimes we do hurt, and when we hurt, hurt people hurt people. So I wanted people to see that. Can I uh, ask you a question? Was uh, Did you use that as your kind of your avenue to uh, like a, a catharsis, like the purge, you know, what you were feeling and get it out there so you can get past all that and change? Um, no, at the, at the time I was already past it. Like I, I okay. grew from those experiences. Like um, it's always going to be inside of you because your past is a part of you no matter what. So yeah. um, I wrote that book for that and, you know, it, it was for that, but I was past it when I wrote it. Good. Thanks. Okay. Um, have you, now this is kind of like an off question, but has anyone who you who have been affected by that phase of your life reached out to you, you know, as a result of reading it or hearing about it or anything like that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, awesome. they have. Um, for the most part, I would say a good 95% of the people that the book is based off of, um, after reading the book, I've, I'm friendly with them again. Um, there are some that are not pleased with me, regardless if <laughs> I apologize or not. But, um, you know, I, I understand that. I respect that. And yeah. it is what it is. Like, I am sorry for those who are hurt. And um, I had to accept that some people aren't going to accept my apology. Some people are not going to forgive me. And while that sucks, and that will always bother me because, you know, nobody wants to see themselves as the villain, I had to come to that reality that at the point I was the villain. And sometimes the villain can't be forgiven for saying he's sorry. Well, and even in saying that, it brings us to your latest work, Wounded. And I love, 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 love the cover of that book. I love the character in that story, and not just because she's a woman, but I love it because um, you kind of, I can see the progression of your writing, actually, um, in Wounded. I see it. Um, when I read it, I was like, wow, I, I could literally, it was like watching you grow. Um, and I guess because I had the chance of reading Monster, and I thought Monster was great. I love the, the actual story, the plot line of Monster. But when I when I got into reading Wounded, it was kind of like it was almost coming from a different voice, um, even though, you know, the main character, she went through some very hardcore, some serious um, life experiences. And as a result of that, um, she kind of had to, like, she kind of put up a wall and she put up a shell around herself to shield herself, protect herself. But I could see how it was almost like you went from a monster being the the male character that was the villain to creating a female character who was kind of like almost a victim of monstrous behavior. And then you kind of, you brought her out on top. So I thought that was unique. Um, The parallels were very, very unique. To me, it was, it was awesome actually to read and see you grow in that. Can you tell us briefly what what wounded is about? Yeah, well, I'm gonna give you a, a real like <laughs> deep history on how it started. Um, before I even started writing wounded, I was writing another book called Love and Happiness. And when I was writing Love and Happiness, um, I I didn't want I didn't want to be a one hit wonder. I'm like, all right, man, I won four awards with. With Monster, I'm like, I, I got to do the same thing because if I don't do the same thing, you know, like people think I'm a one-hit wonder and nobody will read my books. So yeah. I was I was really worried about that. I'm like, I'm writing Love and Happiness and like even writing it, I'm writing it, but I don't love it. And if I was if I was writing it at the time and I didn't love it, I knew something was wrong. So right. my friends, some of my coworkers, they were like, oh, you know, um, we're, um, we really love Monster and it was dope but you got to write a book about a lesbian protagonist. I'm like, I can't write this book. I'm like, what do I know about that life? They were like, yeah, you got to write that book, man. You got to write this book about a lesbian. I'm like, yeah, I don't know about that. (laughs) Then when you went to the company (laughs) hall. Yeah. (laughs) So they took me to a lesbian bar, and they were like, yo, we're going to take you to a lesbian bar, and 
you're going to see, like, what it is, and then, you know, you can write the book. So I'm like, all right. So they took me to this lesbian bar, and I was talking to a whole bunch of women there, and I was like, you know what? I can write this book. So, <laughs> like, um, I, I started writing a book, and I was I talked to 15 women. I took, I talked to five additional couples. It's one thing to write a book, but you want it to be believable. I don't want people to be like, right. oh, this is a dude writing about a, about a woman, a lesbian woman. Come on. So right. I wanted it to be realistic. So I talked to 15 women, and then I talked to five couples. And, um, again, I had to. I wanted it to be deep. I didn't want it to be just, a, oh, a smut book. I wanted it to have meaning. I wanted it to have depth. So um, I, I delved into my family, and I had a cousin who – unfortunately had some of the things that Samantha went through happen to her in real life. Um, oh, wow. I used some of that because I wanted to address awareness on that. Like a lot of times we shy away from talking about rape. It's something, right. it's a taboo topic. It's something that people don't want to really address, but it happens all the time. So I kind of wanted to hit that, especially in the African-American community. We don't really like to talk about that. Yeah. And while well, no, I'm not it's trying, easier to turn your eye on it. Yeah. Like, I didn't want to, I'm not trying to glorify it. I'm not trying to make it, like, something, like, enjoyable. But I wanted people to see that it's real and that people suffer from it. And right. with Wounded, like, I wanted, I started, I was starting, I write, I wrote Love and Happiness. I was writing Love and Happiness while I, before I started writing Wounded. But then I went to Wounded because I'm like, this is a totally different story than the one I'm telling. And so I figured that this would be this would be good because it wouldn't be the same as Monster. It would be its own entity, its own thing. And while all my books do have some form of connection, for example, um, Dr. Andrews is was um, frat brothers with Ron for Monster. And, um, and Wounded, you're going to meet um, some of Chris's friends there and wounded at the strip club. So, like, all of my books um, are connected in some form or fashion. But I wanted it to be its own entity. I wanted it to be totally different. And it helped me because as I, when I finished Wounded, I now knew that I was strong enough to write another story in Love and Happiness, and it wouldn't be the same as Monster or Wounded. It would be its own thing. So it helped me with that. Nice. Wow. Yeah. What were you gonna say, Santiago? Oh no, no, no. Um, I, 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 you know, did a um a little research, and I know he mentioned going to a location called the Cubby Hole, and um, okay. <laughs> where he did some research, and, and it was it was uh it was interesting that interview, and and uh, where he uh immersed himself in um, somewhat the lifestyle. Which I have to give you uh I have to definitely commend you for that because uh, some people don't. Um, do the research or, or really try to uh, find out what really it is about these individuals and their lifestyle, what they do, and if you want to call it a culture or whatever it may be, to really add that authentic feel to that work, which uh, Casey and I discussed last week, which um, you yeah. definitely need that because people, it's a turnoff when it doesn't, it doesn't ring somewhat true or very true. I would, of course, Say that you probably hit it right on the nose. So uh, uh, yeah, I had to commend you for that. And that was that was that was uh, that's awesome. That's awesome that you took your time to do that research. Thank you. Like one with this topic, I didn't want anyone who's in that community to be offended. Like I'm not trying to insult anybody's lifestyle. That's their choice. Right. That's their life. And like I didn't want to insult anyone. So before. I even published the book. I made sure that I talked to my friends who are in that community, and I'm like, is this disrespectful? Is this um, hurtful? Is is this um, wrong? Like, I wanted to see their opinion of it. And, you know, all of them said that it was it was um, good and that it didn't offend them and that they understood the message that I was trying to say. And once I got that, then I felt I was confident in publishing it because that, that was not my intention to ever insult anyone in that community. Right. And, like, I have to say that 
like you learn from every book you do like so that that's nothing that i i know of i i didn't know about that lifestyle or about that and like i have to credit being being a a cop um and actually helped me to be more i would say understanding and a better person and as far as dealing with people in the LGBT community because like you know, it's like in that show Empire, like, for the most part, we're very, like, people are homophobic, you know. Yeah. They don't understand it. They don't understand it, so, you know, they, they're they scared of it. Not scared of it, but they don't understand it, so it's weird to them, and they're against it. Being a cop, I had to work right. with all types of people, white people, gay people, lesbian people, like everyone. So get to talk to them when you get to eat with them and you're working with them and you're going through dangerous experiences with them and you see that they're just like you. They just have a different opinion, like a different right. view of life. You get to understand things better. You get to accept things better and it helps you to grow. And same thing with the book. Like um, I learned from the book when I was interviewing these people and I was talking to them. I'm like, what is the one thing if I, if I could do one thing in this book what do you want me to, the message you want me to say? And they all said that it's not a choice, that it's uh, it's them, it's how they were made, that's how they were born, that that's how they are, and they can't change that. And I respected that, and that's what I tried to show in the book, that, you know, mm-hmm. they are the way they are, they're wired the way they're wired, just like we're wired the way we're wired. And, right. like, some people aren't going to agree with you or the way you do things, but you are who you are. You have you, you make your decisions. You make you have things that you like. You have things that you do, and that's who you are. And who's to say that you're wrong? If it, if you're happy and you're not hurting anyone, why is it bothering anyone else? Well, right. I personally I personally say everybody has an opinion until it happens to them. Yeah. So I can talk trash and I can I can be little and and talk negatively about the gay or lesbian community until you know you have a kid who's gay or a lesbian. Then it's like oh well let me protect you know now you want to kind of like um, now you want to learn you know listen and put a a more compassionate ear on things <laughs> you know what I mean. Um, that's personally how I look at things. A lot of times. We have an opinion on something, and so it happens to us. Agreed. And then yeah. it's like that's when you want to listen to it. That's when you want to be more compassionate. That that almost goes with everything in life that people fear what they don't know until they know, and that's why it's very important to uh, to to actually do your research to learn. Once you learn, you know. Right. Of course, you always hear that you know the you know the the, the the most powerful thing that you can do is educate yourself. So educate yourself in, in, in that culture, in that environment, as Mr. Burgess did, and he looks at it different. And one of the things that I've learned to be able to become a good writer, which all writers should, of course, is one of the best studies that you can, you know, you can really keep on working on it every day is the study of people, the human being, and how they, you know, how they tick, how they do things. And, and when you when you do that and you learn all you know, all aspects of human huma- humanity. Then you will become a better writer. I agree with I that. I think so too. Go ahead. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I mean, when you really think about it, it's true. Because one, when you're writing, if you can't pull, you know, if you can't pull from your personal experiences, then you have to know. You have to study people. You have to learn from. People. And sometimes, for example, we will write about what we know or something very close, um, yeah. very close. But some, you know, maybe it's a friend who's going through this. Maybe it's, you know, a brother or a sister or, you know, you just heard about it. It's kind of like you draw from those experiences or from just studying people and what they're doing, what their, you know, what their experience has been. I think you did a really good job when it came to, um, wounded because when she was going through some of her stuff, I felt for her. I could feel where 
when she was hurt, I felt I felt it. You know, I wanted to curse out um, her mom, and I kind of wanted to like it, it, it provoked an emotion. And I say with any with any writer, um, you want to provoke your reader to feel something, even yeah, if it's definitely. anger. Yeah. You know? I, I yeah, personally want to say that. I want people to feel like, you know, when I wanted them to cry, they cried. Or when yeah. I was going for anger, they became angry. I want them to feel that. Is there? Do you have any special techniques that you use, for example, when you're writing? Um, I personally, as a quick example, when I'm writing a fast-paced, like I did a couple of car chases in one of my stories, so I listen to hip hop. I listen to rap music, <laughs> and I turned it up really loud. And I pumped it up really loud. I got my blood flowing, and then I start writing so that it could come off. When you're reading it, you're reading it faster. You're getting that feel that the car is moving, things are moving. Did you kind of have something that you do or or that you set in place to help you write things like that and and things like that? Um, for me. For me, like, my thing is, I just have to write. <laughs> like, I can't, like, I can't really listen to, like, I can, I have everything in the background, but I can't really focus on okay. anything. Like, I just have to delve directly into what I'm doing. So, like, um, one, like, <laughs> one problem that I, I did to what that I was going through was, like, sometimes I'll be writing, but I'm, like, writing a paragraph here, writing a sentence here, like, going back and forth. I had to turn the internet mm. off on my laptop. I had to turn the internet off on my laptop, and I had to sit there and make myself just write. Because if I, like, I'd be like, oh, well, let me research this, and then I'm like, oh, what's on Facebook or what's on ESPN, and then I'm going back and forth, and I'm not getting anything done. So for me, like, I like I, I won't even listen to like music, or I won't even like watch a movie. I'll just focus on that because if I start watching the movie, I'm like, oh, this is a great scene, and then I start like going off. So I gotta just. I'm kind of like that. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll I am. I get distracted. Yeah. Santiago, do you have like a, a writing, um, no, the writing I, style? I, or? No, I was uh, and 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 once again because I did not read his books, which sound fantastic, except an excerpt of Wounded, which was captivating the very beginning. Um. I was reading an interview about what he, how he actually created his stories, and um, um, I kind of do the same thing. Like he was, like uh, Mr. Burgess, not he. Well, he was speaking about you know the kind of creating the scenes in his head and the movie boards in his head or whatever, and putting the pieces together. I kind of do the same thing. I don't really, I really don't want any distractions. I want to be immersed completely in the story and um, in my own little world almost like I'm meditating on the story. So I don't I don't like the distractions. I don't want um the only thing I need is a bright light and and quiet. So mm. that's uh I'm really simple when it comes to that. Uh the uh my mind is just uh, I, I just you know, I I have a way of blocking things out but not when I'm writing. It's it's different for me when I'm writing. That's so insane but, that both you guys <laughs> do the same thing. Um, because I'm completely opposite. I need music playing. If I'm making, creating a love scene, I'm putting on a slow jam. If I'm freaking, if I'm creating a um crazy dramatic scene, I kind of use music to play on that. Um, because I need to feel that in order for it to be expressed in a way that I want you to feel it. Um, that's that's really. Something I don't know. I guess it's just the the, the difference between genders. I don't know, or, or maybe it's just I'm I'm so, um, saying that. Um, then what is it that you have going on? Like, what can your fan base or your readers? What can they expect from you? Are you working on something else? Yep. Um, next month I should be releasing um love and happiness. Um, that love and happiness is gonna. Again, be something different for people because it's told from the perspective of a woman and a man. It's a married couple, and um, she's cheating on her husband with two different men. So I want people to be like, well, why is she cheating with 
two different men. What is it? Is she doing it for emotional reasons? Is it um, physical reasons? I want you to see it from all perspectives. So I want you to see what he feels, why, how he feels about her, how he feels about the relationship, how he feels about the situation. I want people to see. I know I want people to see that it takes two to tango. Like she cheated, but why did she cheat? Like was right. there something that drove her to cheat? Like like for this book, I put a lot into it. It took, as you can see, it took me. I, I would say two years because. I was writing this before I wrote Wounded, but I finished Wounded before this book because I wanted to put a lot into this. I wanted people to really think. And, again, I didn't want it to be another monster. I didn't want it to be another Wounded. I wanted it to be its own thing. And um, Ken does make a cameo appearance in this one Um, (laughs) because the character in Love and Happiness was actually one of Ken's clients. He he mentioned her name. Oh, and, um, wow. Yeah, I told you, I, I connect all my books together. Um, right. He mentioned her in um, Monster when he um, when he meets Ashley for the second time at the gym. He's actually training Karen, which is the protagonist, well, the character in this book. Oh wow! Oh, okay, that so Ken is back, huh? <laughs> yeah, and well, oh, oh, that Lou might not are, be good. <laughs> no, he, well, it's happening at the same time as Monster. Oh, okay. So, like, um, that scene at that time is the same time period as Monster. She has her adventure. He has his adventure. So. Right. Um, Will and Lou. Who that's are, cool. That's like you're leaving your, you're leaving your trademark, um, so to speak. You know what I mean? Like, you're leaving little kind of crumbs in each book that kind of leads you to the next book, that leads you to the next book. That's really cool. That's interesting. Um, well, I, try, me I get per- that from um, Crash. You, know, you ever watch that movie Crash? Yes, we were just talking about that. <laughs> we were just talking I love about that. Movie. I love that movie. And yeah. So the, yeah, that, that's awesome the movie. Yeah. Everyone's connected. Yeah. Everything is connected. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Uh, I've always believed that before even I saw the movie, which is interesting. Yeah. Well, Santiago caught me a little slow because I, like, just watched it for the first time. Um, I just got to watching it, and when I watched it, I was like, the writer in me, I watch, the way I watch movies, it's, it's kind of twofold. I watch it, obviously, for the entertainment purpose, but I also watch it, and I'm I'm looking at certain scenes that they do, and I'm saying, oh, that's going to be important. I can tell. They highlighted yeah. that. Um so I could see how the story was unfolding, and I watched and paid attention to how everything was connecting itself, you know, to the next person or to the next, you know, things that were taking place throughout the movie. Um, and I thought that is what made it so great, you know. It's really good. I love I'm that. I'm a big movie. I'm a big movie buff. So, like, I'm always watching movies. And, like, I have certain movies that are like my favorite movies, and I watch them over and over and over again because I pick something out, like pick something out of it every time. Like, um, yeah, one of my favorite movies. I know, like, people are gonna be like, really? But um, one of my favorite <laughs> movies is Fight Club. I love that movie. Um, okay. Another, I love Pain and Fold. That's another one of my favorites. Um, well, I have I have weird taste in movies, but. <laughs> like I love a movie called Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. I love Forrest Gump. I love um, New Jack City, Love and Basketball. Like, I watch these movies over and over again because I can find something different over and over again in them. And, like, by you watching know, movies, especially crazy. movies I love. Mm-hmm. I love that. E Pray Love is one of my favorite. I can watch that on forever. Um uh, one of my like my top choice, I would say, is um, the Count of Monte Cristo. I don't know why, but I can watch that a thousand times and be amazed and appalled and surprised and sad every <laughs> single time I watch that movie. It's like I don't know. I, I love that, and I, I think that goes to the the creator's writing ability. You know what I mean? When you can come across yeah. a movie that has great writing and then the the writing was relayed on screen 
to the point where it touched you, it grabbed you enough that it provoked you to want to keep watching it. And that's that's an awesome thing, you know, to do. That's actually what, when I was younger, the the magic that I want to possess. I wanted to own the ability to take your mind from wherever you were reading it and then take you to wherever I'm telling you we're going in this story. That, to me, is magic. I don't know about what anybody else says, but if you can do that, if you can provoke me to feel like I'm in Jamaica, if you're writing about Jamaica, um, that's all. That's like it's magic. It's a magic that you possess in, in, in that, to me, you know. Um, yeah. I'm excited you know about your, your next yeah. Go ahead. Uh, no, I was going to say another movie that does that for me, too, is Precious. Like, I can watch the movie and read the book. And both of them will blow me away. Yeah, I mean, I that movie was. Have you ever read that with Sapphire? I read yeah. that and I watched the movie. Um, it's so emotional. Some movies, it 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 literally um, it takes me there to another mental space, and then I have to kind of walk away. Like I I watched the movie first, and then I kind of walked away, um, and said I'm going to read the book. But I the book for me was. Way more horrific yeah, <laughs> with yeah. the event that took place um, than the actual movie. Um, I'm actually excited about where you're going. Really quickly, Ben, do you think you can let everybody know um, how they can reach out to you? Where can they find your work? Because we're going to play another song soon. Okay. Um, you can reach me at author. Ben Burgess Jr. at gmail.com. You can look for me on Facebook at um, author Ben Burgess Jr. Um, I'm on Amazon. I'm on Nook. I'm on iTunes. I'm on Google Play. Um, I try to make myself available on all formats so that everyone can have the opportunity to read any of my books. Um, You can email me anytime. I answer all my emails. And that's, that's it for now. (laughs) <laughs> okay. Well, everybody, if you are listening, you will definitely enjoy the book Monster. It's a crazy, insane read. It has you wanting more. And then he closes the deal with Wounded. So go visit Amazon.com. Look up either yeah. Ben Burgess Jr. or you Do can that. look up Get Wounded or Monster. Um, I'm going to play another song. I was really happy to have you here. Ben, we're going to play another song really quick. It's called Unconditional Love. And we'll be back.
We are back. Again, this is Casey Baylor with Urban Fiction News Radio. We also have the great Santiago. He's also in the house with us tonight. And we have Mr. Ben Burgess. Um, Again, he's a best-selling, award-winning author of both Wounded and um, Monster. So I'm going to let the guys take the floor. Um, Again, I am still trying to rest my voice. (laughs) <laughs> uh, yeah, I wanted to touch on something that you, you guys were talking about earlier about movies because uh, a lot of movies inspired me to write. However, I've noticed that um, Mr. Burgess appears to be uh, a pensive and an introspective type writer, which I feel like I am. Um, and, and I noticed some of your favorite authors. Is, is that the, uh, would that be like your would you say is your similar style to say uh Dickey and some of the authors that you mentioned? Yeah. Um I have to say Eric Jerome Dickey is a huge influence on me and um I'm I'll be honest and I'll say that when I wrote Monster, I was trying to be Eric Jerome Dickey. When I wrote wow. Wounded, I was trying to be myself. So like um I have to, like everybody has that person that they aspire to be. Like Kobe wanted to be Jordan. Like that's who he right. aspired to be. But now he's his own player. He has very similar similarities, a lot of similarities to Jordan, but he still has his own flair on certain things. And Jordan is the foundation for Kobe Bryant. And I have to say that Eric Jerome Dickey is the foundation for me. Um, when I when I first started reading his books. I already had an interest in writing because I was a big fan of Native Son by Richard Wright, and he was the person who really, like, made me want to, like, be an, a writer because, like, Native Son had such an impact on me that I was like, you know what, I want to have an impact on somebody's life the way this book right. had an impact on me. But then I read um, I read Cheaters, I read Milk and My Coffee, I read Between Lovers, and I was like, I love this. And I was like, I want to be a writer. And Eric Dickey, you know, he's been great to me. Um, when I when I wrote Monster, he supported my book. So for your favorite author to buy wow. your book and then yeah. read it oh, wow. to all of his fans and say, hey, this guy wrote a book. Um, um, I wish him nothing but luck. He then sent me an autographed copy of his book before it got released. And he was like, good luck with your novel. He oh, wow. Talks, he talks to me personally. Um, nice. If I have, if I need, like, if I have a question or something, he'll give me advice. Um, he's always supportive. Um, I can't say enough good things about the man because he is genuinely a, gr- a great artist. And he's a great artist. He's a great um, mentor. So for me, he is 
is the foundation for who helped make me the writer that I am. Nice. I noticed that uh, reading. Uh-huh. No, I was going to say I, I noticed in reading that excerpt and from your interviews that the uh, uh, you and I have very similar idiosyncrasies when it comes to writing. So I, I, it was really interesting because I I've been compared to him in my uh-huh. writing or someone saying the same thing, and then you know a lot of the things that uh, that you write about are, are very similar. We write uh, some things, you know, some some type of. Uh, things uh, similar, but the question that I also wanted to ask you was, what I found very interesting in a past interview is that you view yourself as writing in the genre of literary fiction. Can you explain that to the to the audience? Yeah, that's, that's, that's a really good question, and here's why I say that. When we at Fifty Shades of Grey, Fifty Shades of Grey isn't labeled white fiction. Fifty Shades of Grey is labeled fiction. And why? Right. Because yeah. they want, they like her company wants her to get money from every race. They want blacks, white, Asians, Hispanics, everyone to get their books. Sometimes when I look at us and we label ourselves African American fiction, while it's great that we're writing books for our people with our protagonists who are African American or minority, that's great. And I'm all for that. And that's why my books are that. But I don't want to limit it to that. I want everyone to read it. I want everyone to learn from it. Right. And I don't want to just limit it to just us because, you know what, a lot of things with race could be improved if they had a better understanding of who we are. You see, Absolutely. I feel I feel like a lot of times people look at us and they're like, well, outside races will look at us and think, oh, this one's a drug dealer, and, you know, he's in a gang and stuff like that. They don't see that we are architects, we are doctors, we are scientists, we are teachers and stuff like that. Right. I think that they they look at urban fiction as just that, like just, well, they're in the ghetto and they they don't know anything and they got six baby mamas, and we're more than that. As a people, <laughs> we're more than that. Right. And I don't want it to be limited to that, just that. So right. like, I'm proud to wave the the banner of being an urban fiction, but my book will be under numerous genres as urban fiction, fiction and literary fiction, because I feel right. that it is all of those things. Right. It, it's funny you, you you with that we actually last week we were uh we had a great conversation about that and um, that's interesting because the perspective is uh is is one of is it's a broader view. That's why I wanted to hear from you because uh Casey and I may somewhat look at it the same but also maybe a little different. And um however I, I totally agree with that. I totally agree with expanding and growing. However with every with every art there's there's a classification system for whatever reason they do it, which we know a little bit is political, uh or maybe a lot and uh financial and, and of course you know the powers to be and whoever they may be, um, trying to maybe maybe put a limit on certain genres. I agree. Like we like as a people, we have to and do things differently too. Like as you can see, I watch a lot of TV, but I do like Empire because while they um, talk about you know how they were like rapping and they were in the ghetto, they came up from the ghetto. They learned from it. They're successful and now they're doing something honest with their music and their business. And I like that. You know, it it tends to what we enjoy. Like, for our culture, we like music. We like R&B, we like rap, we like all that stuff. And it it helps to show that we can aspire to be more. And that's really what I want with all of my books, is that you can aspire to be more. And Wounded, she thought, okay, I'm just going to be a stripper. She had an aspiration to be a photographer and... She was more than just a stripper. She had something else. Right. With Monster, he was more than just a trainer. He wanted more than that. Like, I want people to see that you have to, in life, you have to progress. You have to want more from yourself, and you can't just let yourself be limited. Right. Good. Yeah. That well, goes and into, that, and, uh, and that. In, in saying that, it's, it's like you don't want to leave money on the table. I say that all the time. Um, 
I personally, I think, and I said this last week, it's kind of like just because you're an African-American writer, it's automatically assumed that your work is going in the urban fiction genre. Um, I don't know if you've experienced that, Ben, or Santiago. It's kind of like, you know, once you say you've published a book, they want you to categorize it. And then mm-hmm. because urban fiction, it, it really is, you can't knock it or take away from it. It is a huge a huge genre that's causing a lot of doors to open for African-American writers. But, you know, not everybody who writes fiction that is, you know, that that comes from the urban setting or the urban background or, you know, you know Latino or African-American background, we're not necessarily just writing urban fiction. In, in my books, you know, the characters are not pimps or – um, have multiple baby mamas, or you know, they they have their own businesses. They're lawyers. They have, they're they're not the typical what you would expect in the urban fiction genre. So sometimes I feel a little conflicted too about how to categorize my work. Um, yeah, I, I agree with that. Because you don't, See, and I love that. Yeah, I love that because we are more than that, and I think that by putting ourselves and and opening ourselves to more people that we can help change the world and how other races view us because they can see that, oh, wow, this person does do this or this person does do that. All of our all of our art will have an impact on how people view us. It's, on, it's all on us, on how we make ourselves look. Yeah. And, and then For me, really that's could... important. Yeah, it's very important. Well, it is it's important. very important because, you know, we have uh, what people always say once you have that platform and that opportunity to um, to to give out your voice. And, um, and you know, I, I always uh, I always kind of um, subscribe to the to the old saying, with great power comes great responsibility. Um, mm-hmm. and, and one of the things we do, we will have a responsibility is that we have been given a gift an ability to write and, 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 and get people to listen. And these words can shape and mold people and, and make them do things good and bad from what we write. So we have to, we have to realize the power we have. And, and, and a lot of times what we want to do is the moral of the story is, is write these books with a moral to show them that it, that they you know, for people exactly. out there reading them, that there is options, that there is, uh, life is not over because, you know, you lost someone in your family or you lost a job. You know, you have to show, you know, the the the, the growth in people and the ability to to grow within 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 trials and tribulations. And that's what, you know, a good writer can do. Like you were mentioning earlier, the emotions. Because once you get these emotions involved, then you start really thinking about these things. Exactly. Like for me like um I have to say that I've, I've been very fortunate. Like, I've met a lot of people, especially in my career and stuff like that. When I was the youth officer in the ninth precinct for five and a half years, so I did youth and I did domestic for five and a half years. And with that, I met, um, I did a lot with the youth. And that's important to me is to reach them. Um, I have a lot of principles and stuff that believe in the message that I'm trying to relate to the kids. And actually, two principals in the Lower East Side of Manhattan use my novels in their school. I, I thought it was a little crazy, but <laughs> like they get the message. And like, yeah, um, one of the principals, Mark Fetterman, he's from East Side High School. He uses um, Monster and, and Wounded in his school, and he's a big believer in what I try to teach to you. Like. He brings me in to speak to the students and talk to them because he's like, you know, this guy, he started off as a, as a police officer. Now he's a detective, and he's also an award-winning author, and he he's not just, like, some guy that doesn't care. Like, he he uses my books to show that um, I can reach and help kids to want to be more than just a rapper or a basketball player. Like right. I might never, I might never be Tyler Perry, but 
I had a dream of writing a book, and I wrote books, and now I, I keep writing books, and I want, and that's what I try to c- teach the kids. Like, okay, you want to be a rapper? You could be a rapper. You could also be a doctor and a rapper. You can sell your songs on iTunes and also do Man. your other stuff. Like, I want kids to see that, you know, it's cool to want to be Jay Z, but Jay Z is like one in a million. I'm not saying you can't still do it, but you have to have a backup plan. And I, like, with my little bit of popularity, I try to take care of my community. Like, I, for example, April 18th, I'm taking a whole bunch of kids um, to with field level seats to the Mets game. Um, I have friends at the Board of Education. They're picking kids who are doing well in school. Like, I reward those who are doing well in school. If you're doing well in school and you're really trying, and you're unfortunate, like you're you're kind of poor, then I want you. To, I want to reward you. So I'm taking them to the Mets game April 18th. So to, to a few, like with field level seats. That's what I want to do. I want them to see that it can be more, that they can have more, but they have to be positive and they have to work hard for it. And like um, I like I can't change the world, but I I'm trying to change those who I can reach, those who. Well. Change your world. Yeah. Right. Nice. We can't. We may not necessarily be able to reach the entire world, but you can change the part of the world you know in which you live. Um, I'm going to ask really quickly that you please provide information again on where you can be reached, where your work can be can be reached again. Um, Because we're we're at the end of our interview, Um, but let the people know how can they get in touch with you or how can they purchase your book. All right. Um, I'm on Amazon. I'm on Barnes and Nobles, Google Play, um, iTunes. Um, with under Benjamin under Ben Burgess Jr. Um, you can reach me at author Ben Burgess Jr. at gmail dot com. You can look for me on Facebook under author Ben Burgess Jr. Um, I had a website. I'm actually retooling that, so I took that one down. But I'm on the verge of building that back up. Um, Email me, emailing me is fine. Messaging me on my fan page is fine. Um, my return all messages. All right. Well, it has been great um, speaking to you, getting to know you. Your work is phenomenal. Um, I'm sure you you provoked and inspired a few people to go and take a look at it because it really is good. And I'm not just saying that. It really is awesome. I've read both of them, uh, and I was highly impressed with each of your books. And we are going to play another song. It's called You're Amazing, and we will be back. Find the baddest women, but there's too many women. I'm just doing a dish shit. I need to slow down, relax, and just listen. It's like it happens too much, girl. It's like a tradition. You kill the competition, and all the hate it just gives you attention. Cause damn, girl, you're trying to make you down. I'm trying to make you They know. 
know you bad Man, you should see their faces, man, you know they mad Got every dude chasing, but I ain't one of that Cause there's only one of me and I'm the one you looking at Find chicks like dudes that are hard to get So if you're thirsty for a chick, you're gonna regret Them ugly chicks like bad phones, cause we disconnect And all them girls who think they right, always incorrect Shorty got all back, where the heck is just fine? You only your cup right now, just like a bottle of wine brought up a few good points, a few good things um, about not wanting to limit yourself. You never want to put yourself in a box um, because, well, one, you leave money on the table, but also, two, when you limit yourself, you kind of, you eventually allow your, your market to dry up. You constantly have to keep providing content toward that particular market so that you stay relevant because the competition is fierce. Yeah. You, have, you you know, when it comes to, you know, that point that he made was that, uh, Mr. Burgess made was that, and uh, as a literary fiction is, you know, it's it's basically covers everything. So w- what you're doing is just, I write, I write fiction, and you go forward with that and let, you know, let them uh, classify it or whatever, wherever they put it in their stores, wherever they put it, uh, on their websites or whoever puts it there and whoever calls it whatever. It just, you know, the whole goal is to just, you know, say, we're, you know, we're all good writers, that we have good stories, we got uh, experiences and, and stories to tell uh, the masses and people will find them interesting from all walks of life. I, I have an interesting twist on that or take on that. Um, for me, it's kind of like I wouldn't, I would, like he said, when he categorizes his books, he put it in the literary fiction section. He also puts yeah. it in, you know, urban fiction. He puts it in a few different categories. Um, I think that's smart because it will allow your book, once, you know, you do really well in sales, it does allow your your work to kind of, um, once it starts going up the ranks, you can see your work next to big names. You know what I mean? That's the beauty of you know, putting yourself in, in a category. Like, for example, my, my stuff was up against Stephen King and Wendy Williams, and that, to me, was like a personal victory. So I personally right. understand what he's saying. You know, you want to be able to say, hey, my stuff can compete with, you know, people who are not necessarily in that, in my designated category, you know? Right. I think that's really, yeah, you want to do that. Well, well you can be, you know, it's like, you know, wearing many hats. You can actually, you know, because there is a, a separation and a classification system that, you know, you can be ranked in essence, essence uh, bestsellers. You can also be ranked, like you said, on Amazon. So 
So, you know, at the end of the day, you can call it what you want or classify it the way you want and put it in all of these categories. However, some people are going to do it themselves as well, is what I was just saying. It's not really the fact that you, you shy away from that. It's just that, you know, people are going to are going to make judgments. They're going to compare it. They're going to decide or say where it should be, you know, on bookshelves or what, whatever you may have because of what it's similar to. It's, it's funny because when we talk about that, like when you get on um, – uh, some of these uh, these outlets to purchase music or um, or uh, books, um, movies, or whatever it may be, there's always this, if you like this, you might like this. You know what I mean? So, you know, there's always, there's some comparison, even when you're out there, it could be, you know, I, I always see it when I, when I listen to Pandora. You know, on Pandora, they say, if you like this music, you might like this artist. So you know, there's 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 always that. So, but once you get on those on those major labels, you there's always the uh, the fact that you will be compared to books like you were. You know, you were put up against Stephen King, Wendy Williams. Wendy Williams is you know more classified probably as a a, a book of of um you know gossip or whatever it may be. I didn't read it, but Stephen King. Most people know Stephen King type books or or, you know, the genre that he, he writes in or, 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 you know, sci-fi, whatever you want to call it, or horror. Um, so, you know, just to be just to be on something like that's a little bit more widespread like Amazon and, and that type of ranking and everything, that's, that's awesome because for them it's only about giving authors a platform. No matter where they're from, they're not going to separate nobody. If you're selling more than the next man or the next book, they're going to put it there. Well, because Amazon recognizes um, money is green, no matter whose hand it's coming Yeah, from. yeah. Um, <laughs> I didn't want to really say that, but, yeah, basically, yeah, they say, well, you know, whoever makes us money, we're going to give you, you know, this. So, I mean, and that's the way it should be. At the end of the day, who cares, Who you know what I mean, if there's people that that are buying it and it's selling them more, you know, at the end of the day, it's you know, there is, the, you know, to uh, a lot of people, which they always say, of course, because the art crosses into the aspect of business, is the only thing that matters in business is the color green. Right. There is no other color. Yeah, green. so what can you do, you know? So. Yeah. Um, getting back to a couple of different ideas for spreading the word of mouth marketing or positioning yourself um, is what we just talked about. Well, we, we spoke on controversy, but we spoke on cliffhangers. Um, but reviews is literally in the literary field reviews are word of mouth think about yeah. this how many times have you purchased an item took a look at an item took a look at a show a movie whatever it is listen to music based off of the opinion of somebody else yeah all the time i mean you, you all the know. time the, the, the only difference. I watched me, Empire this, because of it. Yeah, I, and and you know it was actually people that that mentioned it that was the reason that I looked at it. But um, I'm gonna say you know with 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 lit with, with lit it's a little different. With books it's a little different. I'm I'm gonna say uh, uh, this is why I think it's different. Now you can get reviews on something that's quick, like a song, mm-hmm. like a movie, right. which is not super quick, but you know an hour and a half to two hours you're done. And you could say, "Oh, it was okay," or whatever. The problem is with 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 with, with the books. Not a problem, but that people are going to take that a little bit more serious because it takes time to read a book. And the thing is, about a book is that if a person completes a book, a lot of times there was something in that book that kept that person interested. So that review is okay. a, is is very very strong because that individual <laughs> took the time, which it wasn't two hours which it wasn't five minutes or three minutes for a song. It was a couple hours, maybe a couple days to finish this book, and when someone is going to lay out their hard-earned cash on it, they want they want right. to know somebody who read that book. And, and that's why I said those reviews might be a little bit stronger. I mean, that's just my take on it because of the simple fact is that you have to take a, a – you have to cut out a certain piece of your life in that day and maybe a couple of days to finish a book. No matter what, how many pages it is, usually someone is not going to sit there 
and knock out a page unless they're a speed reader um, or unless the, the book is, you know, you know, five, ten pages, they're not going to finish it within, you know, four or five minutes. So, you know, that, right. that, those reviews are very strong. They are very powerful. And, and once someone says, oh, wow, that person took the time to read this book and they enjoyed it and they stayed interested, and if they say anything like, I finished it, I couldn't put it down, that's powerful. Well, and think about it, what you just said, uh, uh, based off of what you just said. It's kind of like, you know, if me personally, when I'm reading a person's review, um, funny enough, what I like to do first, I always look at the negative reviews first when I'm purchasing, um, primarily because I'm looking for a pattern of what's wrong. If, if it's consecutively this is wrong, you know, whatever. If it's one thing that continuously comes up, I'm a little bit more mindful. Now, if it if it, that one thing means a lot to me, for example, if we're talking about a product, then it's kind of like, you know, if they say it's faulty or it breaks, you know, it broke relatively easy, then I'm paying attention to that. That means something to me because, one, I don't want right. to buy anything that's not of value. But when it comes right. to books, like, some people can be extremely – Bias. If somebody continuously says the editing was so bad, I can't read it. I couldn't finish it. <laughs> I know right. that's a theme. You know what I mean? There's something going on right there. It might not be worth my time to read it because it bothered 150, 200 people in editing. However, if I go to the positive reviews and I see that there's a thousand people who read it and say, some people might say even in a positive review, the book was super hot, but it had some grammatical issues. If I'm looking at that, I'm saying, okay, right. a thousand people noted that there were some grammatical errors, but the story was so hot that it didn't take away from it. Then I'm more willing, the right. weight of the 1,000, you know, it overpowers the weight of 150, 200, yeah. in my opinion. You know? <laughs> yeah. um, it does, It does, but reviews literally can be what, pushes people over the edge. But when it comes to books, you have yeah. to have the actual book itself. Your content has to be hot. There's no getting around it. What do you say? Yeah, think? yeah absolutely, absolutely. And, uh, uh, and you know, once again, what I just, you know, was saying, you know, the, you know that those individuals have to, you know, they have to, anybody out there writing, any, and, you know, this is, you know, from my experience, and I'm sure Casey will tell you, is that that you need those reviews. You know, you need people to, because individuals are not. You know, they, it, it, it's it's the same thing as anything else out there that people want to hear what they thought, what other people think. Because it's, you know, at the end of the day, we understand that it's still, you know, keeping up with the Joneses. And sometimes people just want to know what other people are into and what they're doing. And if those people say it's good. Sometimes, that, you know, a lot of times it has a bearing on their decision to take something or do something. And definitely right. purchase something. So I don't well, know. Well, think uh, about it. Mm -hmm. no, I was yeah, going to say, think about it, though. When it comes to reviews, sometimes people will purchase a book based off of the majority vote, not necessarily because they're saying it's a good book. We We love good, right? We do. People love good. Yeah. However, a lot of times, word of mouth marketing has two two effects. One, it's telling people what's hot, what's in, what's good. But two, it leaves you feeling like you don't want to be included. I mean, like you don't want to not be included. I'm sorry. Where am I going with that? Yeah. Um, <laughs> you don't want yeah, to not be that included. You, you definitely mentioned that earlier. I mean, it, it, we see it with movies. Like everybody's trying to run to the movie first and see it on opening day just so they're they're the, they're the ones to be able to say, I saw it and it was good and whatever. They want to be the ones to pass that information off. So a lot of times, it, it, you know, that, 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 that rings very true. And, and that goes back to what I was saying, keeping up with the Joneses and what everybody else is doing, everybody else wants to do. That's just the way things are, you know. People are followers. People are going to, you know, listen to what you're listening to. If you say it's good, sometimes – when they didn't think it was good, now to them it's good after they listen to it for a little while or read something because, you know what, people are just, they, they, you know, every, there's a lot of I want to be down, I want to be in, I want to be part of this. 
mentality right. in this world. And it's true. You have to use, and that's how you do it. Position yourself um, to where people have no other choice but to talk about it. How do you do that? You create content that is going to cause them to have their mouth drop. They're, you're going to have them, you know, I actually read a book, um, and when I read it, it was a couple of years ago, in the middle of me reading it, I started shouting at the main character. Like, I was so irritated <laughs> with the main character. I'm like, what the hell? What are you doing? Wake up, wake up, wake up. You know, I'm talking to the character. And that caused me to, like, contact. I, I didn't want to be the only person talking about it. So now I'm calling my girl. And girls do this all the time. I'm calling my girlfriends. I'm calling my sisters. I'm calling my cousins. I'm like, yeah, you need to go get this book because i got to talk to you about it. Like, I need you to understand what I'm talking about so we can have a dialogue, you know. And that works to your advantage. It really does. If you can talk about something that provokes people to want to either talk out loud or tell somebody because they don't want to be the only person who knows it, you that's like setting a fire. And once once it catches, it's it's, it's almost, you know, you can't yeah. stop it. Yeah. Very true, very true. You need that. You definitely uh you know, you have to use the psychological makeup of people and how they do things. And you know what what we discussed earlier, uh, Mr. Burgess and uh you and I was the fact that, you know, you have to study people and know people and their idiosyncrasies, their, you know, normal the 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 basic things that they do and the way they approach things and and, and that's one of those things that people are out there and they wanna know what's going on, they wanna follow what's up. They want to be in. They want to be down. Uh, they want to hear what you have to say about something, and, and it all has an impact and a bearing on a person's decision to, to purchase, to listen, to watch, to um, whatever. It's just to be involved in it. Very true. We love that. And then on top of it, we love drama. So people love you have to tap into a person, your audience's yeah. desire, Um your, their inner desire to gossip. <laughs> to gossip, you have to, because people love juicy tidbits, so you kind of have to yeah. create a story that provokes them to want to gossip and talk about it. And then when they're talking about it, it's almost like they're talking about, you know, their best friend or their girlfriend. They're telling you secrets, things that, you know, and that's what it is, and it causes other people to not want to be left out of that very conversation. That's the only reason why I started watching Empire. Um and everybody yeah. kept talking about it and asking me, have you seen Empire? I'm like, no. And they're like, oh, my God, Cookie is a trip. Oh, I'm like, Cookie, no. who is Cookie? They got you too, huh? So. Yeah. Got you. So when <laughs> they You're got me. And then I'm like, oh, my God, I'm watching it. You got to create your own lane. Make sure watch the... what you want to see. You know, get so well, more important to people. They want to know what you're watching. They no, got me. Sure. They got me. And they got me really good. And because yeah, they, they got, got me really good, now I'm like, oh my God, I hate Lucia's lying. But they got me watching got me it too. literally every but week. I, I, I'm, I'm going to go against Empire, and I'm going to go for those listeners out there. <laughs> watch Power. I like Power. I like Power. You like Power better? Empire. You, yeah, people are going to say, oh, he's crazy. No way. Yeah, Fifty Cent's production of his show called Power on Stars. I'm 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 plugging it like I'm getting paid. Anyway, um, no, I like I I actually like that. I I like that. I guess uh, I can relate to some of the stuff. Anyway, I'm just gonna leave it at that. Okay. <laughs> well, now I'm gonna have to go watch Power. Um, and that's crazy. Word of mouth. I'm telling you. Um, I'm yeah. gonna give a really quick special shout out to a very special listener. Um, Langdon, creator of Masterpieces. Um, he's a listener tonight, and we're happy that you're tuning in. So thank you for that. Again, this is Casey Baylor with Urban Fiction News Radio. To reach me, to reach us, to contact us, if you're a writer, you'd like to be on the show, you'd like to have a dialogue um, with a very talented Mr. Santiago, you want to go to <laughs> www. <laughs> dot urbanfictionnews dot com. Hit that yeah. contact page. Let us know. Um, I'm gonna play our uh, last song of the evening. Power. <laughs> Hashtag power. 
Um, <laughs> hashtag power. Okay. Right. Um, <laughs> we're gonna play our last song of the night. Um, it's called Vertigo, and we're happy that you were with us tonight. See you next week. Yes. Good night. I'm falling, can't stand in one place I'm sick and I'm calling, I'm calling out your name You got me wrapped around all your fingers I try to stop but it lingers And I'm right back to you Hello, where are you? I'm getting sick and tired of this game you're playing Okay. Yeah.